Chris Collinsworth uh, had a chance to talk with him a little bit earlier, and, and he talked about the development of Baker Mayfield, especially what he has seen uh, late this season. Um, the only thing I'd say about Baker is that, and his runs had a lot to do with that game the other day. They clinched it on a quarterback sweep. I almost sort of fell out of my chair, but it was a great call. I uh, got the extra blocker out in front, and Baker was running hard. I mean, he probably ran the ball four or five times, but he was running like a fullback. Like he was running like he was born in Cleveland, and it meant something a little bit extra to him. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think that he has really become uh, sort of the embodiment of that fighting spirit right now of the Cleveland Browns and that uh, poor fan base that, that doesn't get to go to the games right now. I, I mean, I just got to feel like the people in Cleveland are about ready to explode to get back into that stadium and, and cheer with a packed house the way that they they used to do when they were uh, back in the day I can remember so well. So um, I think if anything, Baker's kind of even risen here a little bit lately. He's made some big throws. Uh, he's doing most of it without Odell Beckham. You know, they seem to, have, um, you know, they miss Odell when they get into some of the single coverage situations. But it sort of galvanized the rest of the team, too, and forced some people uh, to move forward. Uh, with that receiving core, probably Donovan Peoples-Jones, the, the number one uh, person on that list. So they're pop they may be a better team going into next year uh, once Odell comes back. Chris Collinsworth, who will be the analyst for Sunday Night Football with the Browns and Steelers, a playoff matchup in primetime on Sunday night. Let's welcome back in the D-man, Dennis Maniloff. Uh, Dennis, uh, what have you seen from Baker? Uh, I mean, uh, the development has been its been pretty much what you would have hoped for if you were the Browns franchise uh, from the beginning of the year until you are right here about ready to go into the playoffs. Oh, yeah, you're right, David. First of all, uh, what Chris Collinsworth was speaking of in, in Week 17, six carries for 44 yards. Uh, the 44 yards, second only to Nick Chubb for the Browns on the ground. So, uh, Baker Mayfield doing it with his legs, helping his team out, capped by that uh, power sweep, the Baker body right for three yards on third and two, or third and one and three quarters. Uh, regarding Baker's development, I mean, obviously we know he had a really good rookie year, set the rookie touchdown passing record until it was broken this year by Justin Herbert, but uh, did an excellent job in 18, but he was playing in games that really didn't matter for the team. 19, high expectations for him and his team. Both fell flat, <laughs> you know, the quarterback and the, the team. And you don't blame any one individual in this case. I think everybody had culpability here. But certainly Baker Mayfield, even when you factor in uh, the potential explanations for his fall off or the explanations for his, uh, you know, his drop off, he still didn't play well. And I think he knew it. And he went into this offseason and was bulldog in his determination to get better and came in more humble than we've known him to be. And I uh, still had the confidence, but he was more contrite, you know, and it felt like he was willing to learn and had been willing to learn. And what you saw was a payoff this year. You saw a, a good season by a quarterback for an 11 and 5 team. He wasn't out of this world good. He wasn't average. He was good. All right? And by the way, there are plenty of NFL teams who would love to have a good quarterback at their helm. That's why I can feel confident in the Browns going forward with Baker Mayfield because he looks like he's going to you know, continue to get better or he has figured out what ailed him last year. He's coupled with a really good coach and a really good scheme. There's no doubt. But you give credit first and foremost to the player himself, to, to the quarterback. And Baker Mayfield was good this year, much more often than he was wobbly. And, I mean, I think his final rankings in most of the metrics that really matter, including for me, total QBR that ESPN does, scale of 1 to 100, he was sitting in the – uh, high 70s, I believe it was. But he was, I think, 11th or 12th in the NFL in total QBR. That's 
That's fine. You can win with a top 12 quarterback in the NFL. And, and the other thing is, is um, you know, he'll be in the system another year. I think the thing that impressed me the most, he isn't making the, the turnovers in the red zone, throwing intercept. He's very aware of when to take a chance and when not to take a chance. And, and even the turnovers against the Jets, it came at a part of the game where he had to try to make a play. Those are turnovers you can live with. Those are turnovers that quarterbacks that win make sometimes. I, I think he's, he's gotten away from the ridiculously bad turnovers that he had uh, in 2019. Dave, you're a, a, absolutely right. I mean, think about last year. Was it 22 TDs, 21 picks? And, and this year it was 25 or 26 TDs and just eight picks. So he, he dropped his interceptions down from 21 to 8. And he played the full 16 games this year. Um, you're absolutely right. I mean, he was willing to throw the ball away. He came into the league with the gunslinger mentality. You know, he was the swashbuckler and, you know, Brett Favre Jr. and all that kind of stuff. And maybe that worked out for him a little bit in 18. And he's like, man, I could keep doing this. You know, I'm, I'm going to be able to pump the ball down the middle of the field and and try to fit it into a postage stamp window. Well, in 19, it was proven otherwise. You know what, Bake, you can't be doing this. There is, you know, Brett Favre is a once in a generational gunslinger for a reason. I don't know that you want to try to be that guy who forces stuff. And it was impressed upon him, undoubtedly by the coaches, but probably also when he looked in the mirror, hey, you need to be smart with the football. You cannot turn the ball over. You cannot be reckless with it. Even though you have the arm talent, you have the, 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 the uh, MPH, the VLO, you've still got to be wise when you have the ball. And he cut down dramatically on his interceptions. And it's one of the reasons why the Browns went 11-5. and five. Yeah, I, and the other thing is, is I think as he gets a little bit further along in this <laughs> offense, so, you know, a second year in an offensive system, what a concept for Baker Mayfield, huh? I think you may see he'll figure out where he can take some chances trying to fit things in that aren't quite as dangerous. That's correct. He can feel dangerous all he wants, but uh, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't have to play dangerous. That's the bottom line. Yeah. And and that's. I also think you credit Kevin Stefanski, you know, for coming in and and being like the voice of reason here. I mean, he was probably. He probably said to the Bake Show, listen, Bake, I mean, I know you like to freewheel it and all that stuff, but look what it got you in 2019. You really weren't that good of a quarterback. You were a bottom 10 quarterback in the NFL. If you want to ascend back up the ranks, if you want to uh, have your fifth-year option picked up and you want to be signed to a long-term deal here, it's in your best interest to listen to me, Okay and listen to Alex Van Pelt and listen to Bill Callahan as we put the offensive game plan together and just be be careful with the ball. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to – that you can't try to make plays. It just means you can't be reckless. Yeah, 